these three things that I do every Friday, I don't say it because I think it's funny or I, I think it's, you know, I, it's just so important, you know, bring it in, everybody. Love each other, care about each other, be charitable. That's it. That, that's the key, in my view. If we do these things, we are all going to be better off. Welcome to the Drew Perlman Show. Think of this podcast as the antidote to the fear, the noise, and the talking heads in the news. The show features an entertaining blend of ancient wisdom, empowering ideas, and cutting edge, healthy living science to optimize your health and your life. All right, so let's dive in and get started. Today's guest on the show is Greg Manorino. Greg Manorino, or GM, is known as the Robin Hood of Wall Street. He is an active full-time trader of the capital markets with a worldwide following. He's also the author of a great book called A Not-So-Random Walk on Wall Street. And he's got an incredibly popular YouTube blog that I listen to every day. GM, welcome to the show, my friend. Thanks for having me. I really do appreciate it. <laughs> so, so GM, you know, reading your book, A Not-So-Random Walk on Wall Street, you know, I, I learned so much about you and I, and I feel as though you've almost lived about 10 different lives because you've, <laughs> you've worked in an auto repair shop, street racing to a physician's assistant and now a full-time trader. Um, GM, I'm just curious, what drew you into the markets? Well, I was a kid. It started with me when I was literally a kid. I saw the movie Wall Street. I wanted to be Gordon Gecko. I had no idea what any of this was about. I just thought it was a great movie. And uh, I just, I don't know, I kind of got sucked in at the time. And that's what drew me into the market. And then my dad got me a job over at Bear. I worked there for a little bit. Didn't like it very much, <laughs> honestly. Uh, got myself into a little trouble. But that's okay. It was a long time ago. I was a kid. And, uh, but, you know, I, at least I got some exposure to it. And I've always been obsessed with it. I mean, I think it's a fascinating thing, uh, honestly. And, and that, that's, it still pulls me in. Like, I find the whole, the whole thing, all the dynamics, all the moving pieces, I just, I just love trying to put it together. I really do. And I say, okay, this is going on. That is going on. What is the most likely outcome? You know, look, no one's right all the time, but I love trying to figure that out. I've always been the kind of person that wants to understand why something works. When I was a kid, for example, I took apart my parents' vacuum cleaner. I wanted to know how it works. Um, I took apart my dad's car when I was about 15 years old. I literally did. And, um, you know, I wanted to, why does this thing work? I, I just was obsessed with it and uh, everything, even the human body, henceforth why I got into medicine for uh, about 20 years. So... I've done a lot of things. I've even driven cabs when I was a kid. I delivered pizzas when I was a kid. I delivered papers when I was a kid. I had a paper route. Uh, you name it, I probably have done it all. <laughs> That's It's amazing. Well, you know, and, and you tell the story with your dad's Camaro in the book. Yeah. And and he, uh, ha he has one of the all-time great reactions, too. He's <laughs> like, okay, Greg, now now fix it. Like, he didn't. it sounded though he didn't even get mad. You took apart his whole car. He didn't get mad. It, my dad was the most amazing person, honestly, from that perspective. It's like he always supported anything I wanted to do. And when I remember that day, I was terrified thinking what my, my, me and my buddy Joey took apart that car and he came home and he looked at it. and He was like, OK, Greg, put it together. And, you know, it was just calm and relaxed. He didn't even care. He just and uh, it really started the wheels moving with me, at least. I got so into that whole thing, uh, rate, street racing, drag racing, building cars. Uh, I'm doing one now. Uh, very, very, very fun for me. That's amazing. So it sounded as though, so you, so you took this you took this detour, this trip into where you became a physician's assistant. Yep. And, and then it sounded like, just from reading your book, that, that with the 2008 crash, you returned back into the markets and started the blog. Is that, is that what happened? That's exactly what happened. You know, look, here, here's the situation. I, I've always dabbled in the markets, but I, 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 I really wasn't nearly, I mean, not even close, immersed in it like I am now. But what really got me was... The meltdown of 2008, 2009, I, I lost, honestly, everything I had. I was allowing other people to manage my money. Big, uh, my, my goodness, it was uh, Vanguard or one of these big companies at the time. And they allowed me to lose all my money. Um, and I said, I'm never going to let that happen again. And it wasn't just me, though. It, it wasn't 
my personal loss. I got angry about losing all my money that I had at the time in my uh, investment plan, my 401k. But it was more what happened to other people. Uh, one one of my very best friends had inherited a lot of money, like a million dollars, over a million, 1.1 from his dad when his dad passed away. And he went out right at the top of the bubble and and bought all these houses, uh, thinking that it was going to be a great thing for him and uh, ended up losing it all. And it wasn't just him, too. It was, it was hearing the reaction and seeing how people were affected by it, it was a terrible thing. Um, people that were nearing retirement. I mean, you know, this is a while back for me, so I could recover. But people at the time who can't recover or, or really were counting on retiring, they, they couldn't do it. And we had the banks sucking up everything and the, the the way the wealth was transferred. It's just always the same cycle. And it really got under my skin. So I just sat down one day and I said, you know what, I, I'm pissed off. So I said, I want to start talking about this. And all of a sudden, all of these people, I mean, thousands in the same boat. So that's how it started. OK, well, this happened to me and then that happened to me and trying to uh, trying to put a perspective on it at that point. And I, I really... After that, I was a massive wake-up call to me, and I just went, I went nuts, literally. I, I immersed myself in trying to figure out, well, why did this happen? And then after looking into it, you realize this was all deliberate. This was all a deliberate action. They allowed this to happen. They knew they were going to bail out the banks. Everything was all set up ahead of time, and they're doing it again, although this time to a much, much greater degree. Absolutely. So people need to be ready for anything. So, so Greg, I mean, I, I listen to your show every day, um, but people that don't, what you, you do such a great job of explaining what to be looking at, like not mm. don't look over here, look over here yeah. at the real drivers of, of what's going on. Maybe just yeah. give people, you know, someone who's not familiar with your show, not familiar with the markets. What should yeah. they be looking at? Number one would be the debt market. The debt market is in a hyper bubble. Um, the Federal Reserve has been buying debt uh, like you can't not just the Federal Reserve, all central banks around the world in unison have been uh, creating cash out of thin air, buying debt, buying assets, inflating a massive debt bubble. Um, but, you know, look, the, people are focused on the stock market, but they, they don't know what they're looking at. They're looking at the stock market thinking it's an independent entity and it's not. The stock market derives its value from action in the debt market. And you can watch the debt market very simply. Here in the United States, the, the benchmark is the 10-year yield. Focus on that 10-year yield and forget the stock market. If you could focus on the 10-year yield and watch its movement, you're going to have a very good idea of what's going to happen in the stock market itself. Uh, the debt is going to continue to inflate, as a matter of fact, more so than we have ever seen before. Um, and that means this mechanism will remain in place. And we, look what's happening. We go from crisis to crisis to crisis. This is they're, this, oh, they're all engineered. It's all a mechanism to draw cash into the system to allow central banks to inflate, to keep rates suppressed, to rob people blind, anyone with an interest earning account, f uh, forcing cash into the stock market here, creating a deliberate risk on environment. Um, and, and this mechanism has been in place for, for years, and it, it has obviously reinflated a massive stock market bubble. It has reinflated a massive housing bubble, and the Fed's actually buying mortgage-backed securities, supplying artificial demand. It's crazy, but uh, I mean, you know, it's, it, it's, it's an amazing thing to really realize what's happening here. But, you know, look, we see all these things, but what, what, what are we going to do about it is really the question. It's, you know. People can sit, people like me, you can sit and say, okay, look what's going on. But they, what I try to do is I want people to, to understand what they can do about it. Again, and understanding that, for example, we all knew inflation was going to hit at one point. Did we realize it was going to be this, this fast? I think some of us did. We're seeing it surge at its fastest pace in history. Okay, so a lot of people I think I hope are were ready for that. You need to hedge yourself against that. With regard to the market, you need to uh, be betting against the debt, becoming your own central bank, holding hard assets. You know how I feel about this. Physical silver, my favorite asset of all time. Um, taking advantage of the stock market, looking for bargains, looking for under undervalued things, realizing that's going to continue to inflate. And, you know, look, people are, you know, everyone's pointing their finger at the, at the market crash. We're not going to get the real, we will have movements of 10, 15, 20, 25% in the market, but that's not a crash. The real crash is going to be when we get a massive sell-off in the debt market. Now, when will we see that? When we see the 10-year yield spike, 2%, 2.5, 4, and that's when we know we're at that moment. But until that happens, yeah, sure, market's going to move around. 
but it's not the big one. I know everyone's waiting for it month after month, sometimes week after week. We have uh, some YouTubers out here saying, oh, this is it. This is really the big one. And, and I'm sure about it this time, although I've been wrong every single time <laughs> I've said this for the past five years. I mean, it's unbelievable. And it bothers me a lot. See, that bothers me, too, because you've got those kind of people that have kept their followers out of the market. This is the biggest bull market we've ever seen. Uh, and I mean, it's unbelievable. People have gotten extremely wealthy off of it. Uh, and a lot of people have pulled their profits out of the market, converted that into hard assets. I mean, it's a machine. Uh, I did that for many, many, many years. I was pull, I would, I used to be a net buyer of options. Now I am a net seller of options. But at that point, I, I was pulling money out of the market whenever I could. I was converting that into physical gold, physical silver, more specifically. And uh, I did that for a really long time. But anyway, look, this whole thing is freak show. You will know that. People don't need to be taken advantage of. They can do something about it. They don't have to be fleeced. But unfortunately, I think most people are. I mean, look what's happening. We're getting a whole new demographic, uh, extreme haves, extreme have-nots, a wipe out of the middle class. If you've been following my work, you've been hearing me say this for years, that it was going to happen. And it's in our face. It's here now. And it's, it's going to get worse, a lot, lot worse uh, from here. I think global debt is going to surge at its fastest pace ever because of this, this war. Uh, this war has given central banks the green light to inflate on an epic scale, more so than we've ever seen before. And uh, just be ready. I want people to be ready for it. So, so um, GM, so for the average person listening, you know, because that really concerns me because you, cause you go to the supermarket, you go to yeah. wherever and you just see people and, and you just know they're just not. They're not ready for this. No, they're and not ready. There's going to be food shortages. They're already talking about it. They're already, as a matter of fact, the headline on Reuters this morning was food crisis. I've been telling people, watch for it. Here we go. Bang. Food crisis, energy crisis. Well, it's crisis to crisis to crisis. Once one crisis ends after they milk it for all it's worth, they bring about another crisis because the crisis demands that epic sums of cash be thrown at it. And nations of the world don't have it. They have to borrow it from their central banks, which makes the central banks even stronger. See, there's a, there was a big misconception for many years that by allowing central banks to inflate, it makes them weaker. Um, no, it's the polar opposite. Every dime, every dollar a central bank is allowed or called upon to print out of thin air makes them exponentially stronger, not weaker. So right now, the central banks of the world are indeed the most powerful organizations on the planet. They have a stranglehold on the world. They are the world, one world government we've all been warned about. We have no say so. We have no representation anymore. Our votes don't matter. Nothing matters anymore. It's all about what they want to do and how they're going to move the pawns around on the global stage. The rest of it's just theater. Mm -hmm. So, GM, one of the big themes that I take away from your show is something you, 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 re you say a lot, which is to raise your awareness. Yeah. What does that mean to you when you say that to people? Raise your awareness. Understand what's happening, really, because we have the mainstream propaganda ministries, you know, telling everyone, look here. Don't look over here. It's always the same thing. They want to distract you. They want to keep you off balance. They're going to lie to you and tell you that our economy is strong. Uh, meanwhile, nothing could be further from the truth. I mean, we've been hearing that our economy is strong. Meanwhile, the Federal Reserve has kept the federal funds rate near zero now since 2008. Really? How does that work? I mean, it's it's all a lie. All they're doing is, you know, com compounding global debt and it's giving the illusion that things are good because the stock market is doing well. I mean, right now, today, the S&P 500 is only about 13, 12 or 13 percent off of a record high. This is nothing. We've gone straight up for years. So now we get this little corrective phase and people are ready to run for the hills. They don't know what they're doing. And that's usually why people get fleeced. But raise your awareness. Understand what's happening. This is a global takeover. Central banks are running everything. They are making puppets of world leaders. They have done that. They're creating a slave world. And it's they are determined to eliminate, eliminate the entire middle class. And this is, again, this going back to a feudal system I've explained for years was going to happen and is here now. And we haven't seen anything yet with regard to that. Inflation is going to get a lot, a lot higher. Uh, that's obviously an inflation crisis. We're in one food crisis. We're marching into that. They're setting it up a massive energy crisis. We haven't seen anything yet with regard to that, too. It's all about bringing more cash into the current environment, stealing it from the future. Uh, and, and that's how the system works. It's a terrible thing.
Mm-hmm. So, so GM, if someone was with you right now and they were hearing all this, these huge, these huge issues, and they and they were with you, and you had to say, all right, this is step one. This is this mm-hmm. is what what I want you to do. Mm-hmm. What would you tell them? What would be step one for someone who's just not used to this way of thinking? What 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 might you say? This is this is this needs to be your first step. For well, someone. like we just said, pay attention would be number one. Number two is once you get that moment of awakening and you real and people do it. It's like an epiphany. They suddenly realize that what they what they've been told is all a lie. And and they need to start listening to themselves. People know something is wrong, but they don't most people don't they can't put a finger on it because again they're being distracted. They're being lied to. They're being propagandized. Once they get that realization, they should go out and start to seek people of the same mindset. Uh, all this other stuff with moving cash around and getting yourself ready for what's what's coming and what 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 is here now that that'll all come secondary number one is realize what's going on raising your awareness getting in with like-minded people and 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 they're all over the place online my blog is full of them i mean it's not just me there's a lot of guys out here a lot of girls out here talking about the same kinds of things people know something's wrong and they see what's happening to themselves. I mean, it's unbelievable. You know, I talk to people every single day. Oh, I can't make ends meet. Oh, I'm doing that. I, I have to take out a loan to do this. And do this is the mechanism. This is what they want. They're trying to create slaves. And a very, very, very bad phenomenon is going on. And if you follow my blog, you know what it is already. You got people borrowing. They continue to borrow beyond their eyeballs, a phenomenon which we would have expected to happen again. These are members of the middle class who used to be in the middle class. Now, what they're doing to maintain the illusion of that is they're borrowing. Credit card debt is soaring. Um, it's it's out of control, but it's all the same mechanism here. And it's very sad to see. But yeah, raise your awareness, number one. Get together with like-minded people, number two. Realize we're not each other's enemies. I mean, that that's what they want you to believe. We're all each other's enemies. You know, you're supposed to hate everybody. You have to hate these people because of that reason. You have to hate these people because of another reason. And they're going to come up with even more. Keep people divided. Divide and conquer. The oldest trick in the book, a mind control. And it works. And mm-hmm. that's why they're going to continue to do it. But what we're in a very interesting, you know, for me, seeing what we're seeing, and I'm sure for you too, you you expected this. You knew what was coming before. It's just so easy. Once you get that epiphany and you realize, whoa, this is what's actually going on. Central banks are going to continue to inflate. They don't care about nothing. Their goal is to is to literally own it all. Okay, to be the lenders and buyers of last resort. Um, to to buy assets. And that's all they're going to do. They want to own the world and they're well on the way to doing that and creating a slave world at the same time. It's it's so crazy. It sounds like science fiction, but it's actually real. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, GM, so just a few rapid fire questions that I usually ask people that come on the show that I really am curious about (laughs) for you to answer. Um, So GM, what is, what is it? some of the daily practices or activities that you have that make you feel the most alive? Honestly, I, in, in my free time when I'm not doing this stuff, cause I got to disconnect from this, this gets to me. I'll right. be on, you've probably seen me on my blog and sometimes I have like little meltdowns. I got to disconnect myself from it periodically. And what I do at that point is, uh, well, I got I got a classic car. I just sold one. I have another one I recently bought. I have another one being built and I like to work on them. I like to, you know, it just it, I totally get in the zone. Um, that's really what, what I, I like to do. Um, I, even during the day, if I have a break, I'll go <laughs> I'll go down to my garage and work on my car a little bit just to disconnect. So, I mean, you know, that's it. And, and try to maintain a positive attitude despite all the crap that's going on here. You just look for opportunities. Realize what you need to do to keep yourself on the right side of this here. Uh, prepare for the worst. Always have the high ground. But you're right. You need to get out there and do something for yourself. I don't know if you like doing yard work. If you like, uh, I don't know. Go, I always tell people, you know, do something for another person that you don't even know. Um, I'll give you an example of that. In my old neighborhood, for example, I went over, I saw my my neighbor's tree kind of leaning over and it hadn't been like that for weeks. And I just, instead of waiting for my neighbor to fix his own tree, I fixed it for him. I didn't even tell him I was going to do it. I just walked over, I trimmed his tree, I fixed it for him. It made me feel good to do that. We need to pay it forward. We need to do things for people that we didn't even know. You know, um, honestly, I, I've done, I've done things like, for example, if I knew like, 
don't even want to say it here, but if I know someone is hurting, let's say they need money or something along those lines, like a neighbor that I maybe talk to, I'll just go over and drop like a $50 bill in their mailbox. And they must be shocked when they see a $50 bill. They don't know where it came from. I don't tell them it came from me. And if they bring it up, hey, you know, I found $50. I wouldn't even say it was me. I don't want them to know. So I think these are important things that we need to do. You know, try to give other people a reason to be happy about something, you know, instead of always worrying about struggling. It's so important to me. You know, it, it goes way, way beyond the markets, way beyond the markets. All right. That's great. GM, in your eyes, what does it mean to be human? Well, this may relate to what you just said. All of that. You got to realize, you know, like we're not each other's enemies, that we need to help each other out. We need to love each other, care about each other, be charitable. That's what it means to be human. I say this at the end of every freaking Friday video. I tell everyone, bring it in. I say, you know, you no know, one's looking, you know, you know, we get close. You know, I want people to to establish relationships with each other like that and realize that we, we need each other. We really do. If we all adapted that kind of mentality, the whole world would be a different place. Mm, it's beautiful. Mm. If if you could travel back in time, say 40 years, 40. what what words of wisdom would your current self share with your younger self? <laughs> be ready for a wild ride. Uh, you know, who knew? You know, life takes on so many different turns and twists and a lot, some of it's really really great, some of it isn't. Be ready for those bad times. Um, people need to be prepared for those things. I I think, uh, you know, it's nice to be a kid. You know, 40 years ago, I, w I was 16. I'm 56 now. I, when I was 16, I was in some ways, <laughs> in some ways very similar to the way I am now. I was it's, When I was 16, I was out street racing. I had a 69 Camaro, the one in that, that I talk about. That was my dad's car. I had a 454 and a four-speed in it. Car was crazy. Uh, I don't know. Just, you know, life is an amazing thing. But establish relationships. Um, try not to let them go. I, I do have a lot of regret. I mean, our relationships, I think I had that kind of fell apart for whatever reason, probably my own fault. Anyway, you know, just, just try to just stay positive in the future. That's what I would say. Beautiful. So I know you do it on your Fridays of your show, but you, you know, some of my listeners may be new to you and your work. GM, would you kind of end by just, uh, having them come in, bringing it in like you do on Fridays and just tell them what you say? Absolutely. You know, it, cause, because the, these three things that I do every Friday, I don't say it because I think it's funny or I, I think it's, you know, I, it's just so important, you know, bring it in, everybody. Love each other, care about each other, be charitable. That's it. That, that's the key, in my view. If we do these things, we are all going to be better off, period. Mm, that's awesome. That's awesome. GM, where should people go? So people want to check out your book, your your show. Where should they go to, to find some of this? Well, my website, traderschoice.net, or just Google me, Gregory Manorino. I'm I'm everywhere. You'll find me. It's not too hard. YouTube. Awesome. All right, GM, thank you so much for taking the time. It's a pleasure to talk to you. You too. Let's do this again soon. Absolutely. Thank you for listening to The Drew Perlman Show. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. In the words of Mark Twain, 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than the things you did do. So throw off the bow lines, sail away from the safe harbor, and catch the trade winds in your sails. Explore, dream, discover, and stay well, everyone.